Hi, my name is Keith Cooper, Northlight Images, and in this video I'm going to look at a question I get asked versions of almost every time after I have completed a printer review. Now, I just published recently um, a detailed review of this, the Epson ET 8500. Yeah, it's an eco tank printer, so it has ink in tanks rather than cartridges. And the questions, well, there are two basic questions I get asked about any printer. Is it good for selling prints? I want to sell my, there are variations of this. I want to sell my prints. I'm thinking of using this printer. Is it any good for it? Can I sell the prints? Well, yes, you can sell prints from any printer if you can find someone to buy them. And that is the key question. Now I'm gonna look at some of the business aspects, but I'll also have a look in a bit at things like cards and other stuff that you might want to have a go at making with this. Um, whether you decide that's a good business for you and this is good for that, that's another matter. But I will address the overall ownership of how you use something like this and how potentially you could use it for a business, albeit with some issues. But anyway, I said the questions I regularly get asked. The, the typical one is, is it good for prints to sell? Well, in terms of print quality here, and I've got some prints and there's loads more in the, in the full review. Um, I've got some prints and they are perfectly good to sell. Now, it depends on what you mean by perfectly good to sell. What does your market expect? But I come back to the market bit in a moment. But in terms of actual physical quality of things, it makes great prints. You need to get ideally ICC profiles to get the best color accuracy for it. But yeah, it's okay. The other version of the question I get asked is, um, is this better than printer X, Y, whatever for selling prints? Now, if you basically ask me, is this better than another printer? The only answer I can ever truthfully give is it depends because it depends what you want. You've not given me any other information. Um, sure, a printer like this will probably be cheaper to run uh, because of the eco tank. You fill the inks up from bottles rather than cartridges. So it, it, it's better in that respect. But is it better than another printer? Uh, that's a difficult question to answer. I, if I've reviewed it, then I will have a detailed written review as well of the, of the that you can look at, look at the specs and things like that. But I can't give precise ink usage costs, for example. When I get a printer, I may only have a printer for a month or so. I get a chance to actually, you know, to, to use it, uh, to try it out. I try it out on all kinds of things. That means I don't keep a close eye on how much ink is used and I get no meaningful data. Uh, there, if you're looking for ink costs for printing, I put a link in the notes to um, a, a web page that I found that is a very useful place to start from Red River Paper, that it's a great place to start to give you an idea of the costs. But even then, you're going to have to do some calculations for yourself. And that's just the physical ink costs. Doesn't cover the media, your time or anything else like that. Now, I can see why people are attracted, and it is the potential ink cost savings for something like this, as to why they might want to use it for making prints to sell. Because that assumes that making the, you know, the actual ink costs um, is a significant part of your cost. Well, I don't sell small prints at all. I do large prints uh, for, for people as part of our commercial work. And for that, the actual ink costs, this is for making some of the big prints I've got on the wall here. Um, the ink cost for that is a minuscule part of what I charge for it. But that's because I'm in a market where I can charge a lot for big prints. And the paper and the ink costs, yeah, they're, they're, not, you know, they're not negligible. But in connection with the actual price I'm charging for the print, they're a small part of it. Now, if you're in that situation and you sell more print, and certainly uh, I would happily sell more prints, but it's not a market that will go into, but I've got, I've got lots of videos looking at the business side of things. If you're interested in this, have a look at the playlist. I won't go into all the economics of print sales and things, but I do have quite a lot of videos covering aspects of this for bigger stuff. But we're talking just this little printer here, um, which is a very nice printer, makes very nice looking prints. In a way, asking me, is this printer good to sell prints, is asking completely the wrong question though. Um, that, you know, I'm, if you've not asked these questions, um, more about 
what am I going to try and sell, but who wants to buy it? If you also want to know where those people are, um, that tells you where you might be able to sell something. The questions I get asked are the technical questions about the printer. They are largely irrelevant unless you've decided what you're going to sell, who you're going to sell to. Who is the big question? Because if you don't know who you're selling things to, who your market is, what they expect, how can you match your product to what the market wants? And remember, you will have to do that. You do have to actually match things. It is far, far easier to make what people want to buy than to sell things that you want to make. Um, I've seen so many photographers come up to me and say, like these printers, I'm, I'm thinking of selling my prints. And I go, who are you going to sell them to? Oh, well, well, if I knew the right website to put them on, people would. No, people don't just randomly turn up and buy. You have to actively market things. And this is the bit that people think forget about. They, fit, they don't really concentrate on the business side of things. Um, so the real questions from the business side of it, of asking, is this a good question? You need to know what you want to sell. You need to know what does your market expect. So for example, um, this is a print on canvas made with this. Now, it's quite small. And I would say the size of this printer is an issue potentially. But this one is a gallery wrap print. I've used the Epson print layout software for printing this. In fact, I've used that for a lot of these prints. It's free, it's very easy to use. You can drive it from Photoshop, you can load files, export stuff from Lightroom, print it in that. It's just a very good bit of software um, you know, for something that's free. There's a canvas print. If you have a market for small canvas prints, and as I say, the size limitation is maybe something, then yeah, sure, you can make canvas prints. You might want to, this is a matte artist canvas, um, HP artist matte canvas, I believe, right, if it's the one. Um, if you want to make prints of this, you might want to varnish it or consider coatings, but you'll know that because the people you expect to be buying your stuff will be looking for a particular product. Um, craft fairs are full of people who have made stuff and then try and sell it. That's always going to be problematic. If you know what people want, then making stuff and selling it should be relatively easy because you'd be there. But you see, if you go to art fairs, craft fairs, you'll see the optimism of, I've made this, it's really good. Lots of people have told me it's great. Why won't you buy any? Because people don't buy stuff. Um, but I've got lots of, you say, I've got lots of videos looking at the aspects of that, of what sells, um, what sells where. Now, that's for me in the UK. Um, it's very different in bits of the US, I know, uh, that I visited. Um, everywhere I go, the market is slightly different. So you need to know your local market because actually local sells. Um, I am far more likely to sell a picture of a tree. This was um, in Colorado. Um, this would be far more interest to somebody in Colorado than it's going to be to someone here in Leicester. Um, local sales. Uh, it's, this, by the way, being uh, this is somewhere in Oregon. Whereas this particular print here of boat unloading, this is up in on the Northumberland coast in the UK. So you need to consider your subject matter. Um, now, I would say that if you're asking me about a printer, I'm hoping you'd know all of this stuff. You'll have thought about it because you'll have thought about what you need, what you're going to do, what the characteristics, and you want some technical question answering about the question about the printer. That's great. That's easy for me to do. But if you just go, is this any good for selling prints? I don't know. Um, I don't know what your prints are. I don't know whether they're any good. I don't know whether anyone wants to buy them. And the fact whether it doesn't matter whether I think they're very any good or not. It's whether the people you have identified who want to buy them, whether they think they're any good. So let's, let's go to actual, you know, enough, another the sort of the business bit of it, uh, which is the bit you should do first, really. Um, what about some of the stuff using this particular printer? Well, um, here are some cards. You'll notice this particular one is printed borderless. Um, this one is also borderless. It's an A4 sheet folded in half. These are pre-creased cards. I've got lots of things about making cards. Um, I've got articles on the Northlight site. I've got some templates that I use for designing things like this. You'll notice these smaller ones, though, have margins on them. 
And that's because borderless printing is only available at certain sizes of media. Get the wrong size, you have to have a border on it. Now, if you can incorporate the border into your design, great. But if you were hoping to be able to print this image borderless at this size, it's not going to work. This is Ely Cathedral, by the way. That just isn't going to work. So limitations are borderless. You've also got media choices that will go through this. Now, there is a rear feed path on this, a straight through path, so you can print on card. But the problem with that is that it enforces a largish margin on the prints. And that margin is over an inch or so um, because of the way the print mechanism works. So if you think, oh, well, I need a thick print on a thick card. It's got to go through here. It's too thick to go through the top slot. All of these, by the way, went through the top slot. If you think it's too thick to go through the top slot, I'll put it through the back. Well, that's great, as long as you weren't planning on printing along the trailing edge of the picture. And also you get margins. You can't print borderless on it. So there are limitations with this. Now, another limitation, and this comes a little bit back to the business side of it, is how long does it take to print one of these on this? It can take at high quality. It can easily take getting on for a minute or so to print it. You can't stack up multiple sheets of card at the back. Um, some thinner cards are okay. You can stack them up at the back. They'll work. That's not a problem. But in general, with printers like this, you can't just load it up with cards, go away, do something else, and come back and they, there are your pile of cards printed for you. You've got to tend it. And that means you better have something else to do or lots of spare time where you want to sit by the printer um, because just loading stuff through a printer, no. Um, so think of your volume as well. Me printing one or two cards like this is no trouble at all. I do it for most smallish printers that I do reviews of. I've got loads of these. These come, by the way, pre-folded with envelopes. Uh, quite a few companies. Uh, these particular ones are from Paper Spectrum in, in here in Leicester. But there are lots of uh, varieties of this. One bit about card. Make sure that you get card that is meant for inkjet use. Um, anyone who asks me about, you know, I've got some 120 pound card stock or something like this. If it's called card stock, it almost certainly won't be designed for inkjet printing. That means the colors will come out washed out. They won't look very good to print on an inkjet printer. You need inkjet media. And so that's one that I will sort of round off on is, um, Stickers. I get asked every time about I do a printer review. Will this printer print stickers? Well, yes, it will if and it's a very big if if you can find sticker material which is meant for inkjet printing. If you try ordinary vinyl sticker material and run it through this, there is a fair chance that the ink simply won't dry. It'll come out. Um, it may well leave smear marks ink inside your printer, which you're going to have to clean, but it'll come out. And even if you leave it a day or so, you go like that and the ink will rub off. Um, now, if you want stickers where the ink rubs off, then great. But if you want to print stickers, you'll need to find the right sort of media. I have never seen a good media yet that I can run through these and get stuff which is in any way robust. That uh, Same goes for some sorts of card. Um, it just doesn't work. Check your media carefully. But really what it comes down to, is this any good for, for printing? Of course it is. But with limitations. Don't think that you are going to get a printer like this and just because the ink is cheap to use that you're going to be able to set up a huge great card business, just printing off cards and selling them and making your fortune. One, there is a very distinct limit to the price you'll be able to get for your cards. And by the time you've paid for your card material with its envelopes and that, then the ink costs are going to be minimal. And if you include your time as well, well, um, let's hope you've got a real paying job as well, because you're not going to make a fortune from it. Fun to use, yes, but don't think it will scale up easily. Uh, this is not a production printer. Um, there is a good reason that commercially cards are printed on very large sheets of card and then cut to size. Um, that's how prints are made commercially. 
and if you want large volumes of cards that's almost certainly how you're going to have to go about doing it now i hope that's not put put people off um it's great to be able to make your own cards this is a scan of a, a watercolor was done using the scanner of of this um it's a really nice thing to do but be realistic if you're asking me about the business side of things think about the business side of things um if you're asking me about technical details of the printer and really you should be thinking about the business side well that's what i'm going to remind you of because i cannot answer the basic question of is this good for business um it depends what your business is and if you don't know that you're stuffed so hopefully that's of some interest and of use please do ask questions it's people's questions that always give me ideas for that please uh, also subscribe and like the channel it is appreciated and uh, it's doing rather well and my next printer i'm hoping to look at will be the epson et 18100 18100 i'm going to think of how to describe that and that's an out and out photo printer uh, that's a3 plus 13 inch because this is a bit small for my liking fine for these cards but there you go so thanks for watching